So today, we need to talk about a game that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. If you're someone that's tuned into the live streams, you've probably heard me reference this matchup on more than one occasion, and now we are finally here. And today, we need to venture to the Pac-12, where USC has been on a collision course with UCLA in a game that's going to give us fireworks on the field, but also carries massive implications. Before we can break this game down, y'all know the drill. I need to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Do you believe the Trojans can come out of this game victorious let me know what you're thinking if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe hit that bell notification as i do constant college football content you don't want to miss any of it and if you enjoyed this content be sure to like and comment down below those interactions may seem small but they truly are massive for content creators such as myself and both getting picked up and maintained by the YouTube algorithm. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And there are so many areas we need to break down in this game, and I just can't wait to hop right into it. And I'd love to start with USC's offense against UCLA's defense. Because when we look at USC's offense, there are so many weapons that a defense has to account for. And not only when we look at the weapons, but when we look at who the head coach is and who the quarterback is and the way it all comes together. When we look at the totality of circumstances for USC, we look at the outside where they have got phenomenal wide receiver play. Jordan Addison, the former Belitnikoff winner, is leading that room, but make no mistake, there are several names that will absolutely hurt a defense. It is not just Jordan Addison, and defenses cannot simply key on him. In the running back room, Travis Dye goes down, and that is a hit. It's unfortunate to lose Travis Dye. Hopefully, he has a speedy, healthy recovery. We will be rooting for him over here, because what a player he's been for USC this season. What an addition. Lincoln Riley and the Trojans got out the transfer portal. Just look at what he's given you this season. Season. So that is a hit, but make no mistake about it, USC still has got talent at that running back position. We can talk about Austin Jones, or we can talk about the individual who I've been really looking forward to watch play at the collegiate level since I really found out about him and watched him play high school football. And that's Relique Brown. Relique Brown is electricity in a bottle. And especially when you look at how he fits into this Lincoln Riley offense, and more importantly, the way he fits in with the pieces around him. And that's where I'd like to turn your attention to now. Let's look at the totality of circumstances with this USC's offense and how a defense has to play them. Because in a situation where a defense would get an offense in a bad position, there are several different ways they can capitalize. Get the quarterback out of the pocket, make him feel uncomfortable, make him be on the move, and make him make inaccurate throws. However, when we're talking about USC, a lot of those things just aren't going to work. And let me explain. If you get Caleb Williams out the pocket, well, now a whole nother problem has been created. First and foremost, he's a mobile guy. Secondly, all the weapons USC has makes it to where he's going to be escaping the pocket, but he's going to maintain his eyes downfield because he knows if one linebacker, if one safety even takes two to three steps forward to try and account for Caleb Williams' ability to be a runner, he's going to pop it right over their head. Because of that, defenses have got to be so disciplined when they play this Lincoln-Riley-led offense, and especially when you look at the personnel. It just makes it so difficult for defenses, and that's why when I look at Relik Brown, this is an individual that sooner rather than later, he's going to be putting up huge numbers for USC, and why not this weekend? He's a guy that can hurt you as a traditional running back, but let him get involved in the passing game, and that's just another weapon, your secondary, your linebackers, they have to account for. So USC has all the offensive capability in the world. And when we look at UCLA's defense, unfortunately, it's not a top defense in the nation. Now, it's not the worst defense in the nation. They come in as the number 69 total defense. But when we start diving into the details, they come in as the number 102 pass defense. We just talked about all of the weapons USC has on the outside. And yes, they may be without Travis Dye. That is a hit. But they still have Austin Jones. They still have Relique Brown. And they still have Caleb Williams to be able to gain successful plays from a rushing perspective. So all that being said, UCLA's defense is going to have to play an incredibly disciplined game. They're going to have to stay true to gap assignment. They're going to have to stay true to assignment, and that's going to be how they can overcome USC's offense. Make things difficult for Caleb Williams pre-snap. Change what he's seeing, confuse him, and make him really take those extra seconds to think about what the defense is trying to get him to do. Because when we look at UCLA's rush defense, they come in as the number 34 in the nation. So you already know USC is going to be trying to soften them up. And that's why I say play disciplined football and opportunities could present themselves. But if you start trying to play USC's game, that offense has got so many pieces. And guys, what's more impressive 
it's only year one with Lincoln Riley in California with USC. This is going to be a very exciting team to watch in the future, and I just can't wait for this matchup. But we need to flip the script. What about USC's defense trying to stop UCLA's offense? Because a lot of the same conversations we can have about USC's offense, we can carry over and have an analogous conversation about the Bruins' offense. Dorian Thompson-Robinson is a veteran quarterback who has been sensational this year. You want to talk about high-powered running games? Well, Charbonnet and the Bruins have led one of the most impressive rushing attacks in the nation. And yes, when you look at USC's rush defense, they may come in as the number 58 rush defense in the nation, but when I really sit down and watch how UCLA is able to get successful rushing plays, it's going to be very difficult for any team to stop, but really when I look at this USC team, I think that UCLA could present some big issues. And guys, we've talked about this before. If you're playing an offense like USC, where you look at it and you say, okay, in the quarterback room, they've got a guy that is an absolute difference maker. That's not even a question. What about wide receiver? Oh, well, they have some difference makers there too. What about running back? Well, the guy they had has gotten injured, but from a talent perspective, from a matchup perspective, the other two guys they have, they could be difference makers as well. If you're UCLA and you start seeing that, you're going to have to try and think, how can we take these difference makers out the game? Well, fortunately for the Bruins, the way you can do that, keep USC's offense off the field. The best way to do that, play control football. Luckily for UCLA, your rushing attack and the way you're able to get those successful rushing plays allows for you to do just that. And if you can get USC to play your game, you can get them playing from behind. And that's a much different situation to be in rather than playing from ahead. Now, make no mistake, if you're a UCLA fan, even if you get USC playing from behind, you're still dealing with all the talent that offense fields. It is an offense that has the ability to score at will and as quick as any offense in the nation. So even if you get that lead, you have to keep your foot on the gas. You cannot let up. But this is why this game is going to be so intriguing. Because when we look, neither one of these defenses are a complete product. USC's defense has not been great this year. And it's really unfair for us to look at Alex Grinch and say, you should have a top defense when he just got there. USC wasn't exactly a roster loaded with talent from top to bottom. They had pieces. Make no mistake. They had guys you'd look at and say, that could be a dude. And USC had great luck in the transfer portal, both offensively and defensively. Shane Lee has been phenomenal for the Trojans' defense. A veteran linebacker who played for Alabama got a ton of great experience his freshman year and now is showing why that experience is so valuable for the Trojans. Not only did they get Shane Lee, USC fans probably know you guys got one of my favorite addition in the transfer portals, and Eric Gentry. Whenever that guy became available, I was surprised that every institution in the nation didn't line up outside of Arizona State to try and get him into their school. He is that gifted. He is that versatile. And he's a guy that if he's back fully healthy, he could be a major difference maker against UCLA because of the way he approaches defense, because of his abilities, because of his athleticism. He could be someone that you absolutely need to try and stuff this run. So when we look at USC's defense, there's a lot to be desired. And UCLA absolutely has a way to attack this defense. But so too does USC's offense. At the end of the day, guys, who do I think is going to win this game? I've ping-ponged back and forth for this game for quite some time. I truly do believe that when you dive into it, while USC is favorited right now, and while they do have a rush defense that's not awful, when I look at how UCLA stacks these successful runs, I think it could give USC a ton of trouble. However, that being said... I just think USC has got a lot on the offensive side that's going to allow them to almost avalanche if things start going right for them, and I think they understand the implications of this game. So I do believe USC is going to come out victorious in a close game, and I have USC by seven. Can't wait to hear from all of you, but now we need to briefly shift our focus from the on-field to the off-the-field. And whenever I mean the off-the-field, we need to talk about the implications of this game because the question must be asked, could USC make the college football playoffs if they win out and win the Pac-12 championship? And this is where it gets super interesting because the college football playoff committee is already letting you know there is a path for USC to do just that. When we look at the college football playoff rankings, Ohio State and Michigan are going to play each other. One of those teams is going to have a loss, therefore eliminating themselves from contention from being a Big Ten champion. When we look even further, 
Georgia will play LSU, who comes in at number six. And if they beat LSU, that'll be LSU's third loss, pretty much while dropping them, moving USC up. If USC beats UCLA, that'll be another ranked win. If they beat Oregon or Utah or whoever is in the Pac-12 championship, that'll be another ranked win, meaning USC has the ability to get two more ranked wins, and if they can win out throughout the season, it's going to be really difficult to keep them out of the college football playoffs. Now, the question will be, what about Tennessee? Because Tennessee is the team that's kind of in limbo right now. They're sitting as the number five team in the nation, and I think there's going to be a lot of people argue, well, we believe Tennessee is a better team than USC, and this gets us back to the age-old question. Are we doing the four best? Are we doing the four most deserving? And even then, this conversation could get super interesting because it's going to be tough to leave out a one-loss USC that finished the year by downing a ranked UCLA and finished the year by downing a ranked opponent in the conference championship when they have one loss or a conference champion. It's going to be tough to leave them out over a one-loss Tennessee. This is going to be a super interesting year for the college football playoffs. I can't wait to hear from all of you, but that's why I say this game carries massive implications. I can't wait to watch it. It is going to give us fireworks. Can't wait to hear from all of you. That's it. See you.